Are you offering me a job? We'll see how you do in your interview, but, uh... <laughs> Hey everybody and welcome to another movie night. I'm Jackie and today we are watching the finale Band of Brothers episode 10 points. I'm not really sure what to make of that title so I'm really curious what that means. So on that note we are gonna get into the final episode of Band of Brothers but before we do you guys know the drill. Please don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed it. Drop me a comment. Let me know your thoughts on this episode, on this series. I have so loved reading your guys' experiences and getting to share this with you has made watching this show that much more special. So please continue to share your thoughts and your stories. I really, really appreciate them. Redder is better, so hit what may or may not be a big red subscribe button depending on your browser, and check me out on Patreon for the full-length version of this reaction as well as all of my other content. Thank you so much for being here, I appreciate all of you, and let's get into Band of Brothers episode 10. <sighs> it's the last time I'm gonna hear this intro watching this series for the first time. Oh, I saw David Schwimmer's name. Are we seeing Sobel again? Yeah, I'm so, so grateful. Not even just so that I remember things fresh for the finale. I'm really grateful for so many reasons that I'm doing this for YouTube. One, because I've learned so much from you guys in the comments. But through the course of reacting, I wind up editing it. I do wind up watching these episodes three or four times each. And so by the time I finish this whole experience, I'll know this series so well. And that's incredibly special, actually, because I don't know how many times I would have watched it on my own. I'm sure I would have watched it multiple times eventually, but yeah, I'm grateful for that. I'm really happy about that. Kind of emotional already. I'm starting to feel emotional already. Like, I don't know why this music feels different now that it's the last episode. It feels more hopeful now that it's the end. Oh, why do I... Oh my god, that's beautiful. I certainly didn't expect to find myself in a place like this. <laughs> oh my god, just the peace and the beauty after all of this. Yeah, I heard reports about a red-headed Eskimo. <laughs> <laughs> what is that? Ran into the regimental photographer. Hmm. He said he had all these photographs of the 506. Going all the way back to Tacoa. I traded him for a couple of Lugers. <laughs> Don't you dare. Don't you dare make me cry. Do not make me emotional over photographs. What do you think you'll do after this? I get some breakfast. <laughs> Find a quiet piece of land. Live my life in peace. Well, it's funny you should mention it, because I had a meeting with Colonel Sink. He had discussed the possibility of uh, staying. Really? Yeah, it was a career. What'd you say? I said I'd think about it. You're one of the best. There's a company in uh, Nixon, New Jersey. It's called Nixon Nitration Works. That sounds picturesque. <laughs> yeah. Well, oddly enough, I know the owners. Gee, I wonder why. Probably gonna expect me to make something of myself. I thought maybe I'd drag you with me. <laughs> Are you offering me a job? We'll see how you do in your interview, but, uh, <laughs> you know, man of your qualifications, I think, probably scrape something up commensurate with your current salary level. Oh, I'm not gonna cry in the first five minutes of this episode. <laughs> Job offers. Hard to fathom. Yeah. I was still getting used to hot showers and morning swims. <laughs> if you're looking for someone to find another way up that mountain, Easy Company is ready and willing. Duly noted. I already recommended you to Colonel Sink. Mm -hmm. Terrific. Let's go find out where Hitler lived. Ron? We're not sure what's up there. The colonel doesn't want us taking any unnecessary risks. Yeah, it's the end of the war. Don't. So the French are going to beat us to the Eagles next. <laughs> That's the real kicker. Jesus. Oh! oh my god. I mean, you can't blame him for having a little fun. <laughs> Jesus Christ! <laughs> Told him I understood his point. You fire oh up second battalion and I'd flank that French son of a bitch. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Makes me proud and nervous at the same time. Please don't pull the rug out from under me and don't have Nixon talk about his future and offering up a job and, and what he's planning and 
kill him in the last episode. Please don't. Please, please don't. Eerie. Not even any natives. That's because this is the one town you can't deny being a true Nazi. Ah, uh, yes. It's a members only kind of situation. Yeah, they are not denying they are loud and proud. Come on, pull a Captain Von Trapp, rip it down. Yank it down and rip it in half. Kitty would love this. How many brides get a wedding present from Hitler? Huh. I just don't even think about it. <laughs> Finders keepers. Seal off the north side and prepare for prisoners. Sergeant All Grant. The shadows in the show. Nobody gets hurt, not now. Please. <gasps> oh, <God. laughs> Thank you for doing that, but... Don't scare me. <laughs> the Eagle's Nest was a surprise birthday present for Hitler. Hmm. A mountaintop stone retreat accessible by a gold-plated elevator. Are you kidding me? There's tacky, and then there's that. Jesus. All white. Harsh. Cold. Hey, Adolf! Love your eagle's nest. I hope you don't mind. We we made ourselves at home. Love with you. As you should. You ready for it? Listen up. German army surrendered. <gasps> it's real. It's actually happening. That's so crazy to think that there was literally a moment between one minute and the next the war was over. Sunglasses. <laughs> Just leave this on inside. Just so cool. I love it. It works for him. 10,000 bottles of the world's finest liquor, wine, and champagne helped Easy Company mark the day the war in Europe came to an end. Oh my god. Take what you want and have each company take a truckload. <laughs> the spoils of war. I don't feel you have to leave anything here for whoever comes next. Monstrous, <laughs> sir. Happy V E Day. V E Day? Victory in Europe. Victory in Europe. This is so surreal. Instead of an aggressive combat unit, we became an occupation force. And no one wanted to leave Birch's garden. <laughs> until they saw Austria. I mean, yeah. That's understandable. I would never want to leave here. This might literally be the most beautiful place I've ever seen in my life. Oh my god, starting at boot camp and ending the series here in one of the most beautiful places in the world. Oh my god, the just the happy, hopeful. Oh my god, they're waving and they're happy. We'll be comfortable here. <laughs> you guys earned it, that's for sure. I wonder what will happen to us, to people like you and me. When there are finally no more wars to occupy us. Fair question. I don't appreciate it coming from you, but... Mark the grim battlefield of Okinawa, where one of the bloodiest engagements of the war is being fought. Japan. Each small advance is gained by sheer grit in the face of withering fire from a suicidal enemy being slowly hammered back into the hills. This is so hard to watch. So, when are we going? Some of them will have enough points to go home instead. How many? Oh, Throwing that's what purple heart. points means. Oh my god. General Taylor is aware that many veterans, including Normandy veterans, still do not have the 85 points required to be discharged. 85? Okay. On this, the anniversary of D-Day, he has authorized a lottery to send one man home in each company, effective immediately. Oh. For easy company, the winner is... Oh my god, there was only one name? 66266 six, six, six. Sergeant Daryl C. Powers! Yes. Shifty. That's how it's done, Shifty! That was incredibly nice. General Taylor has also announced that the 101st Airborne Division will definitely be redeployed to the Pacific. Mm. So, beginning tomorrow, we will begin training to go to war. No rest for the weary. I mean to interrupt you, sir. I just wanted to um, say goodbye. Back home in Virginia, 
I just don't rightly know how I'm going to explain all this. Yeah. You're a hell of a fine soldier, Shifty. There's nothing more to explain. Winters really is... Thank you, sir. ...the best of leaders. Two days later, Shifty Powers was on a truck. Unfortunately, the truck was hit head-on by a drunken corporal from another regiment. He survived, but had to spend the next few months in a series of hospitals. I wish I could say that he was our only casualty in Austria. I've made up my mind, Nix. I'm going back to Kitty. Do you really think that Kitty hasn't run off with some 4F <laughs> by now? Oh! She's waited for you for three years, right? We'll be to Tokyo and back in two years, three <laughs> times. Oh, that's it? You didn't tell him? No, I couldn't get him to shut up. Guts and Glory here applied for a transfer. What? 13th Airborne are heading out for the Pacific right away. Are you in on this too? I can't let him go by himself. He doesn't know where it is. <laughs> <laughs> Brothers till the end. You're leaving the men? They don't need me anymore. There is something incredibly powerful about that. So you were given command of the company on D Day? That's right. Yeah. Paul. And you were on the line the whole time. Can't imagine a tougher test for a leader. Can't imagine a tougher leader. I said, why do you want to leave him in? Well, it's not that, sir. It's just that if the uh, war was still on in the Pacific and I could do some good over there. Just want to do what's right. Just want to do my part. Major, I took this meeting out of respect for your achievements. Mm. And for the hunting first. If they do go to the Pacific eventually, uh, you should be running one of the battalions. Eventually. And frankly, I think you men have earned the right to keep you around. Mm hmm Telling him to take a break. You've earned it. It's in the fucking room, Webb. One of those Polacks, what was at the slave camp, said this is where the guy lives right here. Which camp? Whatever camp. Under direct orders, and I'm happy to follow it. I would be, too. Sorry, after the last episode... Is this personal to you? No, it's a goddamn order. Does Major Winters know about this? Doesn't matter. How the fuck it mm. doesn't? Hang on. You think he's a soldier like you and me? Fucking innocent German officer? Where the hell have you been for the past three years? They can't get here. They can't get here. They can't get here. They can't get here. They can't Hands are shaking. Shoot him! No. On the one hand, yes, he's guilty and he absolutely does deserve it, but there is the question of do you deserve to be judge, jury, and executioner? When do you get out? I believe when my captain gets transferred. Uh, it's the end of my second war. Oh my god. Perspective. My relief! Don't salute the Germans! Oh, come on. I sort of get a kick out of it. <laughs> 75 points. 81! Huh? I have 81 points. <laughs> well, it's just not good enough! Why do I feel so tense right now? Why do I feel hey. really, really tense right hey. now? Where are they going? Munich. Mersten sie nach München gehen? Ja, bitte. That's so funny. Meine schönen Kleider. Was machen Sie dort? No. Sind Sie verrückt? Get in. Huh? Too bad. You don't get to care. Yep. Yeah. Oh shit. Why do I feel so tense right now? Don't you dare. It's Private Janovac. The enemy had surrendered, but somehow men were still dying. What they did have plenty of were weapons, alcohol, and too much time on their hands. That is a dangerous combination. 
You okay, Matt? You need some help? They wouldn't give me any gas. <laughs> Frouts. Oh my god. Well, I, I guess I'll just use his Jeeva. I don't think he's gonna be needing it. Oh. Hold on a second now, right? Oh my god. Oh! Oh! Somebody's taking a bigger beat, me or him. Oh, did they catch him? Where is he? How's Grant? Where is he? Is he okay? Where is he? That's him. Can't say I blame him. Legendarily ruthless spears. The hand is shaking. Have the MPs take care of this piece of shit. Vegetarian executioner. Grant's dead? No. Crown surgeon says he's gonna make it. I mean, in what state, but still. They can't technically prosecute him for murder. I know Easy Company's gonna need a commanding officer post-war. Somebody to hold their hand, keep them from killing each other. <laughs> so you decided to stay in the army? Yes, I'm gonna stay with the men. Mm. Well, I'm glad to hear it. Yeah, that doesn't surprise me. So it's an airborne exhibition. They have one of every Allied combat plane they've used in the war. Hmm. It'd be like a technical advisor, make sure they get everything right. <laughs> Sorry, it's not a more hospitable location. <laughs> no, sir. Paris is, is just fine. <laughs> Sounds like a rough gig. And your driver will drop you off at a hotel of your choice. And um, I don't think we'll see you back here anytime soon. I won't let you down, sir. Malarkey. Mm. You're in a handshake. Yeah. The army, when they give a man a battlefield commission, they usually don't let him stay with the same mm. company. They're afraid the men won't show him the proper degree of respect as they would another officer. It's an idiotic theory. It is. Especially <laughs> in your case. I get the logic behind it, but... When I thought battalion headquarters might be a good place. I can think a few better, sir. Good. He's taking care of them as best he can. There was a German general who was a little PO'd about having to surrender to Private Babe Heffron from South Philly. Thinks it's beneath <laughs> his stature. Jesus. I thought Second Lieutenant Carwood Lipton from West Virginia could soothe these ruffled feathers. Winters, you legend. Look who it is. Captain Sobel? That is the second time he hasn't saluted him. Holy shit. We salute the rank, not the man. Oh! In your place? Way to go, Winters. He deserved that. Your permission, I would like to address my men. That'll be fine, General. We fought bravely, proudly for your country. You are a special group. We found in one another a bond. Wie er sich nur im Kampf. It exists only in combat. A band of brothers. Among brothers. Die Fuchs Höhlen geteilt haben und gemeinsam gelitten haben. We've seen death and suffered together. I'm proud to have served with each and every one of you. You deserve long and happy lives in peace. Oh my God, the choice to have German generals say that. Oh my god. That was incredibly well written. <gasps> but Compton came back to see the company to let us know that he was all right. He convicted Sirhan Sirhan in the murder of Robert Kennedy. Holy crap. David Webster became a writer for the Saturday Evening Post and Wall Street Journal. And later wrote a book about sharks. In 1961, he went out on the ocean alone and was never seen again. George Luz, 1,600 people attended his funeral in 1998. Oh my God, only a few years before this came out. Doc Rowe died in Louisiana in 1998. Oh my God. Bull Ranneman was one of the best soldiers I ever had. He went into the earth moving business in Arkansas. He's still there. <laughs> oh my god, in 2001. 
How we lived our lives after the war was as varied as each man. <laughs> Carwood Lipton became a glass-making executive in charge of factories all over the world. He has a nice life in North Carolina. Has. Harry Welsh. He married Kitty Grogan. <laughs> Ronald Spears stayed in the army. In 1958, returned to Germany as governor of Spandau Prison. Oh, my God. He retired a lieutenant colonel. Oh my god, to do this over a baseball game, the most American thing ever. <laughs> Is there apple pie around? Louis Nixon had some tough times after the war. Then in 1956, he married a woman named Grace and everything came together for him. Aww. He spent the rest of his life with her, traveling the world. My friend Lou died in 1995. Aww. I took up his job offer and was a personnel manager at the Nixon Nitration Works. Oh my god. But I chose not to go to Korea. I'd had enough of war. Yeah. I stayed around Hershey, Pennsylvania, finally finding a little farm, a little peaceful corner of the world, yeah. where I still live today. He's still alive. A very unusual feeling. It's a very unusual happening. And it's a very unusual bonding. Oh, my God. I don't know anybody that I admire more than, than uh, Bill Garnier and, and Joe Toy. I'm just one part of the big war, that's all. One little part. <laughs> From this day to the ending of the world, we in it shall be remembered. We lucky few, yeah. we band of brothers. I cherish the memories of a question my grandson asked me the other day. My grandson. When he said, Grandpa, were you a hero in the war? <laughs> if there ever was one. Grandpa said no. <laughs> but I served in a company of heroes. It's the sentimental stuff. <laughs> uh. Yeah, it's the sentimental stuff that gets me. But yeah, it's... I've definitely noticed with myself, I've felt the weight of the emotion of this series more. Like, it's just the, the further I get, the more I feel it. And I think there's really something to be said for that because you just, the more you watch, the more attached you get. And the more, again, like, it took me a while before I knew each of them by name and could point to one of them and be like, okay, that's Toy. Okay, that's Malarkey. That's Garnier. It's a buildup and you just keep getting more and more attached and more and more invested. But... Beyond that, I know I've said this in a previous episode, I don't remember which one, but it bears repeating because I feel like it's said about the entire series, that this series was done in such a way that it mimics the experience of these soldiers. Again, we've talked about how every single episode was from a different perspective and was about a different experience. And so you get this entire spectrum of experience but I feel like the way that they wrote these ups and downs and the way that it was executed was such a parallel to the way that the soldiers experienced it. Because I was editing episode two today and I got to Hall's death, baby Andrew Scott, and that hit me, like that hit me hard. I felt it, but I literally felt like I, I didn't even have enough time to build up a tearful response or like build up an emotional response before all of a sudden you're on to the next thing. And I feel like, again, that, that's just been the structure of the series is up to this point, we as an audience have not been given the luxury of processing and of experiencing those emotional highs and lows because they're throwing it at us the same way that it was thrown at the soldiers. They were not given time and opportunity to grieve and to mourn and to feel those before they were thrown into the next one. It just, it was one after the other after the other. And I think the series did such a great job of paralleling that in the writing and giving that experience to the audience as best as possible. And it worked. <laughs> it absolutely worked. And this episode was a roller coaster in a different way because I have heard stories about soldiers who were killed in action when the war was over. I, I don't know the specifics, but I do remember seeing a story about a soldier who 
was killed by enemy fire like an hour after the official end of the war because word hadn't gotten to them. And so they were still in the midst of a skirmish and he died after the war was technically over. And so I had a little bit of fear that that was going to happen because we were, we were building up so much this work toward the end. Don't do anything stupid. Like I knew, I knew we were going to lose someone, but there's something just so, I mean, obviously every single death is tragic. Every single loss and casualty and I, I I love the way that Winters framed casualties as not just deaths but losses of a loss of a relationship, a loss of limb, a loss of future, just all these different things the way we think about casualties of war it's not just men who died it's the long-term effects and every kind of loss that you experience in that time and I had never thought about the psychological breakdowns that would happen in a period of time like this when you haven't had the time to process this trauma and get past it but also they obviously didn't talk about mental health at that time the way that we do now and so I, I don't know the name of the man who murdered the Germans on the street in cold blood and shot his fellow soldier um, but I, I never thought about something like that happening that's another one of those things that this series has brought up that I never had heard of had never even considered something like that happening because why would you unless you were there like why why would that be something that you think about and to see the psychological breakdown of what war does to you and him just I'm not saying it's right absolutely not there's there's no defending that but I thought it was really fascinating that Spears couldn't and wouldn't shoot him because we have ex we explored that concept in this episode of being judge, jury, and executioner. And don't get me wrong, war criminals deserve to die. Like there, there's just there's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. I, I loved that scene with Webster and the other two men of finding this officer and saying he's guilty. He did this. You remember what we just saw? He did that. He deserves to die for it. And it's that sort of. I don't want to call it a moral gray area, but in opens up that conversation of, okay, yes, he deserves it, but do you have the right to be judge, jury, and executioner? And where, <sighs> yeah, I, I admit I don't know enough about it. And I, I definitely had a little bit of just sort of moral discomfort in that moment of like, okay, how do I actually feel about this? Where, where would I stand? How would I feel? I mean, after the last episode and after seeing what I had seen, if I was in their position, it's a question you kind of ask yourself of what would I do in that position and would I make the same choice and how would I feel about it? And the fact that it was Spears who was literally the one in episode two who became legendary or notorious, whichever perspective you want to look at it with, for executing the German prisoners and giving them cigarettes before before executing them. The fact that he had this reputation of being just so stone cold and he couldn't do it. I, I, I love that we saw that side of him, that more complicated human side of him. So I think that was a really, really nice touch. But also, my God, the scene of the German general. Because one of the, the fascinating things that this series has addressed is this idea of which episode was it? I think it was the last episode. I think it was episode nine where they talked about in any other circumstance, I might've been friends with these men. They just happened to be wearing a different uniform. And that scene in episode two where Malarkey meets this German soldier who it turns out is from Eugene, Oregon. And again, they might've known each other. And so to frame those final words, those final honorifics and sentiments about being brothers and about this experience that they've had framing it in the context of a German general saying that to his men and the men of easy sitting there and taking it in and realizing that they've had this parallel experience and they came out on top and obviously I don't think anyone should disagree that the war ended the way that it should have to have that moment of reflection and realize that there there were parallel experiences on both sides and that's just that's that was so smart and so well done and again they've done such a great job of showing the complexities of it 
and Easy's experience, but that as much as some things are black and white, some things aren't, and how complicated it is, and I just, I, I feel like I'm rambling a little bit at this point, but yeah, this was, this was a hard episode in a different way. Like, the, again, this was just that, that sort of sentimentality, but what happens when the war is over? What happens when all you've known is survival mode? Literally, they, they've been in this space and this just survive, just get through. You're just doing the next thing, the next set of orders, the next mission, the next battle, the next thing. What happens when it's over? What do you do after that? And not even just in the long term, but literally what happens when you when you are informed that the war is over? And it's like, okay, well, now we we raid Hitler's house and we we hang out and wait for the next day. Like, what, what even happens at that point? Like, that's just, that's fascinating. But anyway, I am astounded by this series. I'm absolutely, absolutely blown away. And this has been such an incredible experience and an emotional experience, but also just my little film student heart has been singing with how spectacular the series was executed, how well it was written, how well it was shot. I will rave about the lighting and the cinematography and the technical execution of this un until the end of time because this series is lightning in a bottle and there are very, very few films and shows that have everything. It's so rare to find something that has the best writing, the best cast, the best performances, the best cinematography, the best editing, everything about this. There was not a single thing that was not top-notch in this and that's so rare. That's so hard to find and it's why shows like this and series like this, I can't even say series like this because this is generally regarded as one of the best series of all time. So, um, series that are considered top-notch, there's a reason for that, and it's because they hit every single beat. And it's been a joy to watch, if that's not a strange thing to say about such a traumatizing experience for these men. It's been such an incredible experience for me, and I'm so glad I got to share it with you guys. So thank you for watching. If you've stuck with me since episode one, or if you're just watching this now, I am so, so grateful to be able to have shared this with you guys. And this has been a much more special experience doing it this way than it possibly would have been watching it on my own. So thank you. Thank you very much for that. And I hope you guys enjoy the documentary, which I'm about to watch. I'm probably gonna cry some more, <laughs> but I'm gonna watch that and I will be doing the Pacific. So if you are a fan of Band of Brothers and if you're curious to see those reactions, then those absolutely will be coming among maybe some other things. We'll see. You guys have thrown out some excellent recommendations that I'm looking forward to watching. So thank you for joining me with this experience. It's been incredible and I'm, I'm very thankful. So on that note, please don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed it. Drop me a comment. Let me know your thoughts on this episode, on this series. I have thoroughly enjoyed reading your guys' thoughts and experiences. Again, it's made this a truly, truly exceptional experience. Redder is better, so hit what may or may not be a big red subscribe button depending on your browser, and check me out on Patreon for the full-length version of this reaction, as well as all of my other content, and links to my Instagram and other socials are in the description box below. With all of that out of the way, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate all of you, and I will see you on the next one.